today we are taking a look at a new plugin by Slate Digital called Fresh Air. This plugin is pretty good at increasing the clarity in your mix by boosting the mid and high frequencies. We will do a sound test and I will show you how to use this plugin. My name is Matt Flank, let's get started. So I want to start off by talking about the installation process of this plugin because to me it was way too complex and it should be easier. If you want to skip to the plugin itself, you can click the timestamp that's on your screen right now. So first off, as I already said, the installation process for me was pretty complex because you have to go to their website, click a couple things, okay, that's fine. But then you have to log in, you get an email, you go to another page, another page, and it just takes way too long until you actually reach the install page. For me, installing a plugin should be easy, fast and straightforward, and this was not the case. And then there is one more thing, I don't know why this is, but if you use the VST2 version of this plugin, it is 32-bit and it won't work in Ableton. If you want to work with this plugin in Ableton, you will have to use the VST3 version, or you'll have to bridge the VST2 version. This is no big deal, but I couldn't find any information about this on the website, so I was kind of confused. Now let's take a listen to the plugin. I have it on the master of my song and I'm just going to play the music and mess around with the knobs. So as you can hear, it's actually pretty good at bringing out some of the high mid and very high frequencies of the song. However, if you overdo it, it can, it can get really noisy, so be careful when using this plugin that you don't overdo it. Now let's go over all the knobs and their functionalities. This is what the plugin looks like when you first open it up. As you can see, it's a pretty clean UI and I actually like the way it looks. The first knob, the mid air knob, is there to boost the presence of a signal. Then there is the high air knob, which increases the brightness of a signal. It brings the super high frequencies to the forefront and increases the amount of air in your audio, or MIDI if you put it on a MIDI track. Then we have the link button, which allows us to link the two knobs together. And what I really like is when I set the logs to a certain value, let's say we set this one to 12 and this one to 30, then the difference between these two knobs is 18 and when I lock them, they will not just jump to the same value like some other plugins, they actually stay at the same difference of each other. And as you can see, they stay like that even when I drag uh, the knobs up or down. Only when one knob reaches 100%, the other one will also go to 100% and when I drag it back down, the difference will be lost. So next up there is the trim knob and this is simply the output gain of the plugin. By using these big knobs, you can you actually increase the volume because you're boosting certain frequencies and you can use the trim knob to decrease the volume again. So then we have the power knob, which is just the on off switch of this plugin. And lastly, on top here, we have the digital VU meter. This shows the real time output level in decibel full scale. When I play audio, you can see a line and a ball. The line actually means the peak output and the ball is the RMS which is root means square. Then on the top bar we have some more buttons and selectors. First off if you click on the logo of Slate Digital you can access the user guide and online support. Then we have a preset selector and you can see there is a couple different presets built in. You can also save your own presets if you did. Let's say I made these changes and I really like it. I can change this preset by clicking this button right here, give my preset a name and save it. 
It then will appear in the preset browser under user presets. If I want to delete the preset, I can just click the trash can icon right here and it will delete the preset. I can also delete the factory presets, but I'm not going to do that. So then what I really like as well is the undo and redo arrows because in Ableton at least, when I press Ctrl Z um, to undo something, it doesn't actually work with plugin values, it only works with Ableton values. So if I made a change in this plugin by accident, I can actually go back by clicking this arrow. Then we have an AB selector. Basically there is two instances of this plugin running and we can choose between A or B to compare the signal. So for example, we can set one to this and one make and make one a little bit more subtle. And so we can switch between A or B to compare the signal. And if you want to copy the settings from A to B, we can click this little arrow and the settings will now be the same. Then lastly, you can turn on the information boxes when you hover over a knob like this or you can turn them off by clicking this icon again. Then for some shortcuts, if you double click or hold Alt or Option while clicking, you can actually type in a value. And if you use Control or Command when dragging, you can make fine adjustments. So one thing that I noticed is that if I double click, I can actually change the value. But if I hold Alt, it actually resets the value and then allows me to type as well. I don't know if this is a glitch or not, but I'm just pointing it out. So then, I think this plugin is really nice and easy to use, apart from the installation process, but again, that could just be me. If you're looking to get some more clarity in your mix or on a specific track, this plugin is definitely really good at that, but I find that really easy to overdo it, so be very gentle with the changes you make in this plugin, because it can actually make your mix sound very noisy. That's it for this video. If you want to see more videos by me, consider subscribing. I make content about free plugins, tutorials, making music and more. If you like this video, leave a like to support me. Thank you guys for watching. My name is Matt Flank. Peace out.